this idea of the sense of superiority over others afflicted this ummah. And this is the exact thing. Oh, I'm telling you, Allah pointed out that the Israelites had this mentality. And Allah corrected that mentality and gave this, this deen to the entire world. And now, each one of us became mini Israelites. Assalamu alaikum. Before you begin this video, just quickly wanted to let you know that so much of the work on the Qur'an has been completed on Bayina TV. I want you to enjoy systematically studying the Qur'an from the beginning all the way to the end in brief and then in great detail. And to do that, I'd like for you to sign up on BayinaTV.com. And once you appreciate what's going on in Bayina TV, I want you to become an ambassador for it and share that subscription with friends and family and give it as a gift also. Thank you. Then we get to this next ayah where Allah says, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيزُ that is, that is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever He wants. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. And Allah is the owner of the ultimate favor. I want you to first understand the meaning of the word fadl, the favor, what I'm calling favor. Fadl al izar means if somebody has a really long dress or a cloak, like royals used to wear clothes, but they used to drag behind them, right? Or you might see, you don't watch movies, but you'll have a royal holding up his garb or the servants holding up their garb when they're walking. That excess stuff is called. Fadl, actually. The excess long part is called Fadl. Fawadil al-mal is basically profits from your property or your business. So your bonus is a Fadl. Your bonus. Or your extra profits, your extra sales are a Fadl. Or sometimes in America, I don't know how taxes work here, but sometimes the government actually gives you back some money after you pay them taxes. You get a tax return. Right? And when you get that return, it's a little bit of a Fadl. Okay? So... That, that fadl is extra, you didn't expect it, it's more above, above and beyond. Fadlalahu, uh, this is reversed in, in uh, text sequence. Fadlalahu ala ghayrihi, to raise someone above someone else, to give someone an extra advantage over somebody else. This is an important word and I'll show you why. Uh, before I get to this ayah. What did Allah say about the Israelites? He said, وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ I gave you an advantage, I gave you an extra advantage. And I gave you a preference over all other nations. That's what Allah told Bani Israel. He gave them more prophets than anybody else. He gave them more chances than anybody else. They lost the Torah multiple times. It was restored for them multiple times. Allah is now using the word Fadl after saying, first of all, He sent a messenger among the Ummiyin, and then He opened the door to all nations. And that is the Fadl of Allah. The word fadl is particularly important now because now the fadl has moved. Ooh, what just happened? The fadl has moved from one to the other. Now I want you to see one more thing in Surah Al-Hadid, this series of surahs. I'll just hi highlight the bottom ayah actually. I'll tell you something brief about Surah Al-Hadid. 57. This is 62, that's surah number 57. Allah there talks about how uh, nations that came, the, 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 the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, are so confident that you have nothing. That your book and your prophet is nothing. And they have dismissed it because they don't think it's possible that the Ummiyin, these Arabs, they're going to have a prophet? Come on. Why would they be blessed? What do they have? You know, they, they couldn't accept that someone from that lower nation could be blessed. Because of that, they will never even give it time to think about the word of Allah that you've been given. They won't even consider it. It's not even on their radar. And when it's not on their radar, Allah says, one of the punishments of those arrogant people is they don't even get to know that they no longer control or they have never have any control over the favor of Allah and He gives His favor to whoever He wants. At the Mufassirun said, the favor of Allah here is the Qur'an. They don't even know what they're missing. They have no idea. And Allah says part of the goal is they won't even get, the, the arrogant one amongst them, they will not even get to know. They won't even know what they're missing. And that's a punishment on them. The ones among them that are curious, Allah will expose them to it. And He describes that in other places. But this is among them, the ones that are very, you know, they have a sense of supremacy. And uh, what has been given to Muhammad is inferior. It's less than what they have. 
So they'll never consider it. Allah says, yeah, you won't consider it. And I, I will no longer let you consider it because of your attitude. So that's the fadl of Allah that they're missing out of it. Now look at what Allah says about the, his fadl. He says, يَخْتَصُّ بِرَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Other places in the Quran. He, he especially chooses with his love and care whoever he wants. وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ And Allah owns the ultimate fadl. يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ He brings into his fadl whoever he wants. وَالظَّالِمِينَ أَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Now, this, this idea that this prophet is not just for the Arabs. He's actually for all of humanity and the doors have been opened for all of humanity. A couple of times in the Quran, Allah says this about his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we didn't send you except as a rahmah for all nations and all peoples. An important thing, and another one, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We didn't send you except, as a, as, as, except for all of people to give good news and to give warning. وَلَكِنَّا أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Most people have no idea. Now, the thing I want you guys to hear, especially the younger students here, the younger college students and young men and women that are here, I want you to understand something. Islam became global. Islam was meant to be global, not Arab culture. Arab culture is Arab culture. And Allah created Indonesian culture. And Allah also allowed for Sri Lankan culture to develop, and Indian culture to develop, and African cultures to develop. Islam did not come, so everyone around the world wears thobes. And everyone says, hey, what are people in Saudi wearing? Let me copy that, because I want to be more Islamic. That's not why Islam came. Islam did not come for that reason. The, the, you know, we developed this idea that the more you look like an Arab, especially not even every Arab, the more you look like an Arab from the Gulf, the more Islamic you are. I don't know where you got this idea from, but it's definitely not the Quran. The Sahaba themselves, they went to Rome, Arab Sahaba went to Rome and put on Roman clothes. They did that. Quran gave guidelines on how you should dress. But not what you should wear. How you should wear. How you should wear. You, and and this, this idea, it makes me sad sometimes. Because you know sometimes you, be, you beat young men that don't know any Arabic. They don't know much about their deen. But they're rocking like the most Khadiji. You're, you're, you're from Kosovo, bro. Why are you, why are you wearing that? And like, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ya akhi. No, 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 that's all I know. I just want to sound like... <laughs> you could just say bro. You, could, you don't have to say, yeah, he's not more Islamic than bro. It's okay. It's good. So we, we became, a, 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 you know, the, the idea that somehow copying Arab culture makes you more religious or somehow that's a superior culture is actually what Islam came to end. Allah says they began as what? Al Ummiyeen. Right? Not Al Illiyeen. Al Ummiyeen. They were a culture with no heritage, and Allah decided to elevate them. And by result, He's decided to elevate other nations. But then, here's the tragedy. Who was being taught a lesson in these ayat? I've showed you now. Who was being taught a lesson? Who thought they were better? The Israelites. So Alhamdulillah, we learned that lesson. Now no Pakistani thinks that they're better than Bangladeshis. Alhamdulillah. No Indonesian thinks they're better than the Malaysians or the Malays think that the Malay Malays think they're better than the, the Indian Malays. They don't think that ever again. The Albanians and the Kosovans, equal in every way. The Algerians, Moroccans, and Tunisians, best friends. Nobody thinks they're better than anybody else. You know? The, the Qataris and the Saudis, you know, everybody gets along. We don't think anybody is less than us or more than us. But you know, Muslims in, Muslims in India and Muslims in Pakistan, best friends forever. Right? The whole point of this was now humanity will see themselves, they will see a people that come from different cultures, different backgrounds, different clothes, different food, different language. But one thing unites them and makes them equal like nothing else and that's their Islam. And if we don't hold on to that, and we and, and by the way, that doesn't mean we should all dress the same way, or look the same way, or talk the same way. Allah's design was diversity. That was His design. But when we start 
celebrating our culture, our heritage as somehow superior to somebody else's. And then what we did is, it wasn't enough that this was happening in our home or it was happening in our country. We wanted to bring that into our masjid, the Allah's house, Allah's house. So now you can have a masjid in, in, in certain countries, you can have a masjid where it could be that there's a one community, they're the majority in that neighborhood, right? So you go to Steinway Street, there's a lot of you know Moroccans in Steinway. There's a Moroccan masjid, you can say the Moroccan masjid. But other people go there too, right? It's just it's Allah's house. But now when, what starts happening in some places is when other people go there, they look at them like, Brother, that's not how you pray. They won't talk like that to one of their own, but they'll talk like that when there's a foreigner or somebody else. They'll do that. So one, one thing that became is certain races started becoming uncomfortable with certain other races. But then there's another kind of fadr. The Israelites developed the idea that the ones among them who have knowledge are better than the ones among them who don't have knowledge. The knowledgeable ones are better than the ones who don't have knowledge. And then they had strong disagreements with each other. So what did, alhamdulillah, Muslims never do? If you walk into a masjid and you don't look like, you don't pray like everybody else in that masjid is praying, your beard does not fit the uniform beard standard for that masjid. Or, you, you know, we start, hmm, this guy, huh, I see. Unfortunately, he's going to hell because he's not wearing the, he's not wearing the Jannah uniform. Clearly, nobody gave him the memo. This idea of the sense of superiority over others afflicted this ummah. And this is the exact thing. Oh, I'm telling you, Allah pointed out that the Israelites had this mentality and Allah corrected that mentality and gave this, this deen to the entire world. And now, each one of us became mini Israelites. That's the, that's the sad thing. I mean, it hurts me to say that. But we have to, you can't fix something if you don't identify the problem. There's a hadith of the Prophet المؤمن, المؤمن. The believer is a mirror of the believer. If there's a stain on here, the mirror will show there's a stain. And the stain that I see that hurts me is that we became either nationalistic, tribal, we became extremely tribal, or we became extremely arrogant in terms of our own religious understanding. I learned from my shaykh, this is the haq, which means that all of you are batil heads. You know, the, all of you are wrong. None of you can be right. This kind of like us versus them, me versus everyone else, this kind of mentality is what Islam came to eradicate. It, and just think about early Islam for a moment. Just Sometimes you should just stop and think about early Islam. And you're, you'll be amazed. When Rasulullah gave his final speech, and he said, The ones who are here should spread to the ones who are not here. How many people were in front of him? Thousands. Are they all the same level of knowledge? The thousands of people? What do you think? Same or no? Some people know more, some people know less. Then he said, by the way, when you said, share with someone else, make sure you bring them back so they learn from the proper highest knowledgeable people and then only, in the, only otherwise don't share anything. Don't say anything. Islam spread organically. And Islam, somebody knew two surahs, they went and shared what? Two surahs. Somebody knew the entire Qur'an, they shared the entire Qur'an. Somebody knew, if, they knew how to pray, they just taught somebody else what? How to pray, that's it. That's what I learned. And they shared it. And the knowledge organically started spreading. And that's the early victories of Islam. They spread in this way. What did we do centuries later? No, 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 you can't pray. No, I can't teach you how to pray. I'm not certified. I didn't get four master's degrees in how to pray. I can't tell you how to pray. Me? Teach you Fatiha? No, no, no. I, when it comes to Fatiha, I know as much as a Christian or Jew or an atheist. How can I teach? You need to get a certified PhD to teach you how to recite the Fatiha. Crazy people? This, this is insane. This is not how Islam began. We took the fadl of Allah and removed it. People started, they learned a little. And then it puts pressure on me. If I'm going to share it with someone else, I should try to learn some more. And everybody took personal responsibility. What did we do? No, 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 no. Responsibility goes only to scholars. I don't have to do anything. The average Muslim had to be a minimum level of educated. 
so they can be a contributor. You see? So they can be helpful. You didn't have to all become scholars. We didn't have to become scholars, but we did have to become learned. And you have to find somebody you can learn from and they can, and then they get asked, so somebody comes and asks me, I don't have the answer. Now I have to go learn from someone else and then share back. And it wasn't about pride or ego. The problem is when you have one group of people that says, we have all the knowledge, come and ask us. If you don't ask us, then you're going to get misguided. Then those people develop their own kind of arrogance. They develop their own kind of elite status, which happened in previous religions. There needs to be a, a, a transparent connection between scholars and the people and everything in between. An open, transparent connection. And that was what was, that's the, what's missing so, uh, so far. Okay, now, anyway, look at the open invitation. I'll, I'll wrap this up quickly. Whoever would obey Allah and the Messenger, whoever, did Allah specify which ethnicity? Which nation? The open invite. Whoever would obey Allah and the Messenger, then they are among those who Allah has blessed from among the prophets and the ones who accepted the truth and the martyrs and good people. And what a beautiful company that is. Meaning, if you join these people, you're good people, you are considered in the same group as the shuhada, the siddiqeen, and you can even join the company of the prophets. You can be with them in Jannah too. That is the favor from Allah. Let's word fadl again. That's an open invite from Allah. It's not just an invite to accept Islam. It's an invite to eventually be in the company of prophets. What a fadl of Allah. All the heroes of our history, we can join them. We can be among them. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. Now the, the other side of the fadl. This is the scary side of the fadl. Please listen to this. I know it's towards the end of the hour. Listen to this part carefully, please. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. Those of you who claim to believe. Man yartadda minkum an dinihi. Whoever among you starts walking away from his or her religion, you start taking steps back from your religion. Then Allah will bring a new nation. Allah will bring a new nation. A nation who He will love and they will love Him. Meaning, Allah is saying, you're taking steps back because clearly you don't love me enough. That's why you're taking steps back. And if you don't love me enough, there's plenty of people that I will love and they will what? They'll love me back. And if you, if you want to take steps back, that's fine. That's your choice. But the, the invitation is open to the entire world. You're not a special race. That only has to be you. Now it's open to the whole world. So the, on the one side, that's a good thing. On the other side, it also makes us replaceable. You understand? It could be that the, the Pakistanis, the Bangladeshis, the, the Egyptians, the Moroccans, they don't uphold Allah's book. And Allah decides, no, you know what? I'm going to replace you with the Germans in a hundred years. They're, they're all going to be, they're going to carry my religion now. I'm going to replace you with the Italians. They're going to carry my religion. He could do that. He's done that before. He's done that before. The Tatar, the vast majority of them who slaughtered Muslims, were then basically carrying Islam for the next few centuries. So Allah will replace one nation with another nation completely. So He then describes, what is it that about them that I will love? Why will they replace you? What quality will they have that clearly you don't have? They'll be very humble before believers. And they'll be tough against enemies. You know what Muslims became? really tough against each other, very humble before enemies. Isn't it? Allah says, They'll struggle in the path of Allah. And they will not be afraid of the criticism that comes from anyone who criticizes. They will not be people who fear criticism. Now just internalize these words. How many people take steps back from Islam because they are afraid of what? Criticism. Criticism from the family, criticism from the workplace, criticism from the university, criticism from people riding on the bus, criticism, crit I can't do this thing, I don't, you know. Allah says, right? You want to take steps back? Your choice. Allah will bring about new people that He will love and they will love Him. I met somebody who told me they have a really hard time where they, they, women, for example, they struggle with hijab for different reasons. I've realized that after talking to hundreds of sisters, 
It's not one reason. There's a, and I, I empathize. One reason though was really epic. I've never heard that one before, so I'll tell you. I just think that because I come from a country, the women that wear hijab are all villagers. So they're uneducated. So when I see a, I see a hijabi woman, I think of an uneducated woman. I don't want to be associated with uneducated people. That's why I don't wear hijab. I'm like, Ooh, that's a new one. You're on, I mean, just honest enough to share with me because most people, when they have that kind of an ugly opinion, they don't share it. They just say, I, I just, you know, something in me. <laughs> but that's pretty raw. That's, that's honest. I, I respect it. I respect it. And then I'm like, and on the flip side, you have a young woman who, you know, wears the hijab, gets rejected from college university applications, gets rejected from job offers because she's wearing the hijab. And then doesn't, Allah keeps opening. He closes a thousand doors and he opens a new door from when Haifu from where she couldn't even imagine. And she gets her education, gets her education. And she's some of the highest ranking PhDs in many countries are hijabi women, right? And I, I look at that and say, okay, here's a person who says, I don't want to be associated with what? Uneducated people. And that person wasn't able to complete their education. And on the flip side, you got people that are ignorant villagers, the ummiyin apparently, that are reaching the height of heights, right? So Allah will replace, He will replace individuals, He will replace nations. If that's our attitude, Allah says, I don't need your attitude. Take it somewhere else, take it to TikTok. Okay, that's not what He says, that's what I'm saying. Okay. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Same words. That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever He wants. Isn't that the word we're studying? Here He said, I've opened it up to all nations. That's the favor of Allah. There He says, by the way, you take steps back. I have many other nations to choose from. That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever He wants. And the, now the, the, the words, Man is an Islam Mosul, Yasha is Sayyidul Mosul. And because they are both Hua, I'm being technical, but that's okay. You'll get over it. Both Hua, it gives you two meanings at the same time. What it, one, gives you, one meaning it gives you is, that is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever Allah wants. The other meaning is, that is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever actually wants it. I'll say that again. That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever actually wants it. Wallahu <laughs> So the, the, You don't get to say, oh, well, he chooses whoever he wants. What, what can I do? No, you didn't want it. Because if you want it, there's no way he won't give it to you. There's no way he won't give it to you. Subhanallah. Yeah, there's... Um, uh, let me just see. Oh, we, we are... Okay. Al I want to finish this ayah because I want to start the next session with the, with the next ayah because that's heavy. So, Al Allah's intention, Allah wants. I translate it, Allah wants. Yeah? Uh, the want in Arabic is two words. Sha'a and arada. Sha'a and arada. So, the irada of Allah is the intent of Allah. And the Mashia of Allah is also the intent of Allah. But what's the difference between them? I want you to, it's a subtle Quran thing because you know in translation you'll just see Allah wants. But I want you to know the difference between them, yeah? So the word Shaha comes from Shay. Shay. You know what Shay means in Arabic? Wallahu ala kundi shayin qadir. A thing, something solid. When Allah has decided something and it's set, it's solid, then you see what word? Shaha. If you see irada, you'll see Allah wants something, but it will depend on you. For example, Allah will say, Allah wants, by teaching you the laws, Allah wants to make your life lighter. Allah wants to make your life what? Lighter. But whether your life becomes lighter or not, depends on who? Depends on you. Because if you don't follow the laws, your life will not become lighter. But if Allah has the mashia, if he does Sha'Allah, that means whether you apply it or not, your life will definitely become lighter. It's guaranteed. It's done. It's solidified. But irada means Allah has made the intent, but now it's up to you whether you want that intent to be fulfilled. Allah wants to make things clear for you. Allah says, Allah wants to make things clear for you. Is there a part of that that depends on you? It does, doesn't it? You have to go learn. You have to seek that clarity. If you don't do your part, then it will not become what? Clear. If that was the Mashiach of Allah, whether you tried or not, everybody would have clarity without any attempt at themselves. So that's the difference between Sha'a and Arada. 
And here, guys, you're distracting everybody. Uh, it's okay. What happened? Nothing happened? This is nothing? Three people I would have tolerated. Four or five, and then everybody's like, what are they talking about? God, this is, this is the tragedy of education. I don't get tired of telling the same jokes, as you may have already known. So I'll tell you the same old joke. It's not a joke. It's actually... I, it's my jokes are actually my trauma is what it is. Okay. So I made the mistake of teaching an Arabic program, Arabic class, in a classroom where imagine my class my, my podium was there and behind me was a giant window. And my students are looking at me and they're also looking out the window. And behind the window, in the distance, there was a highway. Cars. I kid you not, my students, I could look at their face and tell if there's traffic. When there's traffic, they're doing this. When there's no traffic, they're doing... One of my students really likes trucks. I can tell if there's a truck on the highway. He's looking at me, look at me, and there he goes. <laughs> when you're in a lecture, everything other than the lecture becomes interesting. Poor Belang comes and talks to Osman about some issue, and you're all like, what are they? I want to know. I want to know what they're talking about. Uh, if this was not a lecture, you would not care. That would not be important to you. But it's because it's a lecture, this becomes the... You guys know this in Jum'ah Khutbah. Jum'ah Khutbah is, you know, it's mashallah. So some of you, you hear, Inna alhamdulillah, Akim salah I like that. In between your Ashab al-Kahf, right? That's, that's Friday, so it makes sense. So, <laughs> but what do people do? They're like, now who's going to walk in? <laughs> And this masjid is especially challenging because the carpet is very simple. So you can't even look at the lines that go like this and that and make up your own faces in it. You know? <laughs> so, That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever He decides to give it to. And whoever makes the firm decision to get it. Sha'a, strong decision. Will, solid will. And Allah possesses the ultimate favor. Many Mufassirun have commented over and over again that the fadl of Allah is also referring to the Qur'an. Allah possesses the ultimate favor. That is the, the favor of Allah is the Qur'an. Yatzu alayhim ayatihi is the fadl of Allah. Yuzakihim is the fadl of Allah. Yu'allimuhum al-kitab is the fadl of Allah. Yuzakihim is the fadl of Allah. Abba'atha fil ummiyina rasulan. Rasul himself is al-Qur'an yamshi. The Qur'an walking around is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So all of it boils down to the word of Allah. And that is the favor of Allah that they're missing out on. Assalamu alaikum everyone. There are almost 50,000 students around the world that are interested on top of the students we have in studying the Quran and its meanings and being able to learn that and share that with family and friends. And they need sponsorships, which is not very expensive. So if you can help sponsor students, on Bayina TV, please do so and visit our sponsorship page. I appreciate it so much and pray that Allah gives our mission success and we're able to share the meanings of the Quran and the beauty of it the world over.